Hey everyone, welcome to Witcode. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Chrome extension with using TypeScript and React, and we're going to make that possible by using Webpack. And so before we start, let me show you what we're going to be building. So this here is a simple Chrome extension where the icon is right here. If you click it, it opens up this pop-up, which is all written in React and TypeScript code. And what it does is it has a GIF of a dog. And if you click on generate dog GIF, it'll append it onto whatever website you're on. But so this is what you're gonna learn how to build in this video using React and TypeScript. So once again, this whole thing here is written in React or TSX code. But yeah, enjoy the video. So let's start creating this extension. And to begin, let's just create a source folder. This will hold all our source code. And now at the top level of the source folder, let's add an index.html file. This HTML file will house our React application, which will be our extension pop-up. Now let's create three different folders inside the source folder. So we have our background to hold our background scripts, we have content to hold our content scripts, and React to hold our React application. And now inside our background and content folders, let's create an index.ts file. And inside our React folder, let's create index.tsx file, which will hold our J or TSX TypeScript code. Now inside our React folder, let's also add a components directory to hold our React components. And inside the components folder, let's create an app.tsx. And now that we've got all this done, let's initialize our project as an ES6 NPM project with NPM in it, ES6-Y. What this does is create a package.json file with the type set to module so we can use import syntax. And now finally, let's create a manifest.json file and create this at the top level. And this, of course, is to provide the required information about our extension. But now let's turn our project into a TypeScript project. So first, let's install TypeScript from NPM. TypeScript is simply an NPM package, so we can do NPM I TypeScript just like this. And now let's initialize this project as a TypeScript project by running the command npx tsc dash dash init. And what this does is create a tsconfig.json file like this here and fills it with some default values. And we will be using this tsconfig.json file for type checking and .d.ts file generation. We'll use Webpack and Babel for the actual transpilation process. To do this, set, we'll set the key JSX, so uncomment this, and we'll set this to React JSX. And this key JSX basically specifies what JSX code is generated, and we want React JSX. Next, let's set declaration under here. We'll set declaration to be true. And this declaration key tells the types, TypeScript to generate type files or .d.ts files from TypeScript and JavaScript files. Then let's also uncomment emit declaration only. And this tells TypeScript to the TypeScript compiler to only emit .d.ts files and not JavaScript files. And finally, let's also do isolated modules, set this to true. And this basically ensures that each TypeScript file can be transpiled without relying on other imports. And this setup is, is once again, how we can make sure that this tsconfig.json file is used for type checking and type declaration file generation, but not actual transpilation, which is what Webpack and Babel will do, which we'll see later on. And let's also include at the top level of here, this configuration file, include and exclude. So include, what this does is specifies an array of file names or patterns to include in the program. So we're telling type, the TypeScript file to look at everything inside the source directory and its children directories and exclude specifies an array of file names or patterns that should be skipped when resolving include and so when resolving this and we don't want to include any node modules or distribution folders now let's focus on creating the react application and and our scripts so background script and content script and we're going to do all of this with webpack so first let's create a webpack configuration file at the top level called webpack config .cjs because we're going to use CommonJS module exports in here. But now to get Webpack working, we need to install a few libraries. And these are Webpack itself and Webpack CLI. And we'll install these as development dependencies. But so what Webpack will do is it will transpile our TSX and TypeScript code into JavaScript that the browser understands. However, for Webpack to do this, we need to install a loader for Webpack called Babel Loader, like this and also some other Babel dependencies. So install these and I'll show you inside package.json. So we have Babel loader, Babel preset TypeScript, preset React, and preset env. 
And so real quick, a loader is a function that Webpack passes code through to perform some sort of transformation. The Babel loader is a Webpack loader that transpiles JavaScript code. So this here transpiles JavaScript code. Babel presets are used to configure the Babel transpiler. So these essentially are used to configure this. For example, we have Babel preset react, which adds support for JSX code, and the Babel TypeScript preset, which adds support for TypeScript. And now we also want to install a few or a couple plugins for Webpack called HTML Webpack plugin and copy Webpack plugin. And we'll install these as development dependencies as well. I forgot to add a uh, npm i. So these are now here html webpack plugin copy webpack plugin and so a webpack plugin interacts with the webpack lifecycle and the html webpack plugin creates an html file to place our bundled javascript code and the copy webpack plugin is used to copy individual files or directories into the build folder that webpack creates but now that we have the required libraries let's configure webpack with our configuration file so i'm going to paste in some code here and I'm actually going to change this. This is ECMA script right now. Let's change it to be CommonJS. Sweet. So this is basically, this file here is what will basically be the brains behind this whole program. But essentially what this configuration file will do is create three different out output files. One's going to be called contentscript.js, one's going to be called background.js, and one will be called react.js. And this is determined from this output key where we set the file name to be substitution name.js, where the name will be these keys here. And these will all be placed inside a folder called dist. Let me actually add directory name here. And now we also tell Webpack here to copy over our manifest.json file into this distribution folder. So pattern, we're saying from manifest.json, copy it to the distribution folder. And this is because this file, this manifest.json file, is required for working with Chrome extensions. We also tell Webpack to pass all TypeScript and TSX files through the Babel loader, this here, to convert it into code that the browser understands. So pass it through the Babel loader using these configurations or presets. Also note that this order here is important. Basically first, we wanna turn TSX and TS into JSX and JS. Then we want to turn JSX code into JavaScript the browser understands essentially. And we also set at the very top target to web because we're going to be working in the browser and the mode to production. And of course, in a real world scenario, you'd want to do a configuration for production and development. But for this, we're just going to stick with having the mode set to production. But now to get the benefits of TypeScript, let's start installing some typings. So what these are is we need to install NPM packages from the at type scope. And these packages contain TypeScript declaration files or types that end with a dot or files that end with a dot d dot ts extension. And the one that we want to install because we're building a Chrome extension is at types dash Chrome and install this as a development dependency right here. So the this package here at types dot Chrome provides TypeScript type information for working with Chrome. And let's also install some typings now for React and also React DOM. So this provides typing information for working with React and working with React DOM. So now we have our typings. Let's work on configuring our manifest.json file. So this right here. So every Chrome extension requires a manifest.json file in its root directory. And this file contains information such as the name of the extension. Um, so let me actually put some in here, some code in here. So it has things like the name of the extension, the uh, location of the pop-up, which is index.html, permissions that the extension has, such as certain URLs it can access, and things like this. So here, what we do is we give the location of our pop-up to be index.html. We tell the background, we specify the, in, the location of our background script to be background.js, and our content script to be content script.js. We also give the content script the permission to run on every single URL. We give our extension a name, um, a description, a version, and we also specify the, the version of this file, which is version three, which I believe is the most up-to-date one. And note that the location of all these files, so content script, background, and x.html, will be inside our dist folder that Webpack creates. So it'll be what's created from all these entry points. But now we've got that sorted, let's create our React application. So to do that, let's first install React and React DOM. And now let's create inside our source directory inside React. In this index.tsx file, let's render our React application inside a div component. And now let's fill in our 
HTML file that contains the div component. So we create a root. Um, you can see we're using TypeScript with as HTML element. And then we render this app component into that root. And what that will be is this div here. And below this, we also see our source file, our React.js source file, which contains our React code. This React.js file is what Webpack will create inside our final dist folder. And now let's create the app component inside app.tsx. And for that, I'm just gonna copy some code. So let's open up app.tsx, which will be our app component. And this is all that's gonna be to it. So this application contains a button that when clicked basically generates a GIF, which is this here, this, <laughs> this dog GIF that I found online. And then what it does is it gets the active tab using the Chrome tabs API and then sends a message to this tab containing the source. And now let's, let's handle this by creating our content script. So let's go into content and inside here, let's make it alter the current tab by appending the message sent from the React application, which is our GIF. So now our content script is listening out for messages. And when it gets one, it's gonna create an image tag, set the source to be the message, and then append it to the document body. That message, of course, being our dog URL source. And now basically our application is built. So let's just create a simple NPM build script to build our application with Webpack. So inside package.json, under scripts here, we're just gonna call Webpack, config, and build it, the application, using our configuration that we made, except this will be CJS. So now, if we run npm run build, so say we run npm run build like this, what we get outputted is this distribution folder. And in here we have our background script, which is empty, our content script, um, our index.html, our manifest.json, and our React code. And you can see how all of this has been minified, actually, because we have the mode set to production inside Webpack. But anyway, now what we can do with this distribution folder is we can upload it to the Chrome extensions to see it. So all we have to do to do that is go here, do Chrome dash dash extensions, and it'll load it up. And let me turn off this one. And now we go to load unpacked here. So the top left, go to wherever this application is, which for me is here, and then upload the dist folder. So this one here, select it. And I believe it's this one here. And we can check by let's reload it. And now inside, let's go to example.com. Let's check our extensions. It's this one here, create a Chrome extension. We pin it, let's open it up. Here's this dog GIF right here. And if we click generate, you can see it appends it to whatever page you're on. So pretty cool GIF, but or pretty cool Chrome extension. Um, and of course, because we have our permissions set to any URL, you can go to my blog website, for example. You can generate the GIF here. I think it'll probably be at the very bottom. And yep, there it is. And now one final thing is I mentioned in here, let me close out a lot of these. I mentioned how our TS config file here is used for type checking and also type file or declaration file generation. We can create a script to do the type file generation inside scripts. And to do this, all we would need to do is run npx tsc. And what this will do is it will build our project using this tsconfig.json configuration. So now if we run this here, say npm run types, it'll use this tsconfig.json file to produce type files. So we can see we have a type file. There's nothing inside these, but because we don't have any typings, but you can see how we have type files generated for each of our TypeScript files. So the only one I think we actually have it for is our app component where we're actually exporting. But anyway, this is my video on how to create a Chrome extension using TypeScript, Webpack, and React. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.